Crystals and minerals. All of crystals and minerals are made of chemicals. They're made of compounds, substances. For instance, the first one is going to be made of lead sulfide, galena. So here's galena. To the left is a picture of its geometry. Here are some samples of galena. Uh, galena is actually a famous name. It's where the United States President Ulysses S. Grant was born in a town called Galena. Here is the, uh, the a close up of the uh, Galena uh, crystal and also sodium chloride. Do you see any differences, any similarities here? Uh, <clears throat> first person to give me some extra credit on that uh, presentation, five to ten minute presentation it would have to be, will get a lot of extra credit. The similarities between Galena and sodium chloride. Okay, galena is the primary ore of lead. <clears throat> Worked for its lead content as early as 3000 BC, it is found in ore veins in sphalerite, pyrite, and chalcopyrite, and in scarns as well. Scarns talcotites in American English are calcium bearing silicate rocks of any age. Silicate is the uh, is what sand is essentially. Mo most rocks are made of uh, some kind of silicate, as well as in sedimentary rocks where it may replace carbonate beds to be deposited in poor spaces. The crystals are bright when fresh, but often tarnish. Tarnish is a thin layer of corrosion that forms over copper, brass, silver, aluminum and other similar metals as their outermost layer undergoes a chemical reaction. <clears throat> Tarnish does not always result from the sole effects of oxygen in the air. For example, silver needs hydrogen sulfide to tarnish. It does not tarnish with only oxygen after air exposure. That sentence was, the crystals are bright when fresh, often uh, tarnish after air exposure. One of the oldest uses of galena was coal. Coal is an ancient eye cosmetic, traditionally made by grinding galena, lead sulfide, and other ingredients. It is widely used in South Asia, the Middle East, North Africa, the Horn of Africa, and parts of West Africa to darken the eyelids and as mascara for the eyelashes. It is worn mostly by women, but also some men and children which in ancient Egypt was applied around the eyes to reduce the glare of the desert sun and to repel flies, <clears throat> which were potentially a source of disease. Galena is the primary ore of lead, which mainly used in making lead acid batteries. However, significant amounts are also used to make lead sheets and shot. Galena it is often mined for its silver content. Example, the Galena Mine in northern Idaho. Now, first person to read this will give a five to ten minute presentation on Galena as a cosmetic. I gave you a little bit, but Galena as a cosmetic. Galena is lead sulfide mineral, is a lead sulfide mineral with a chemical composition PBS. It is the world's primary ore of lead and mixed and mined from a large number of deposits in many countries. It is found in igneous and metamorphic rock to medium to low temperature hydrothermal veins. In sedimentary rock it occurs as veins, breccia, cements, isolated grains, and as replaced... Sorry, I had to change the uh, timing. Uh, isolated grains as replacements of limestone and dolostone. There are some very pretty examples. Galena is very easy to identify. Freshly broken pieces exhibit perfect cleavage in three directions that intersect at 90 degrees. It has a distinct silver color and a bright metallic luster. Galena tarnishes to a dull gray because lead is primarily is a primary element in Galena, the mineral has a high specific gravity, similar to density. 
uh, 7.4 to 7.6 where water is 1. That is immediately noticed when picking up even small pieces. Galena is soft with a Mohs hardness of 2.5 plus and produces a gray to black streak. Crystals are common and they usually are cubes, octahedrons, or modifications. The Mohs scale of mineral hardness is based on the ability of one natural sample of matter to scratch another mineral. I will talk about a Mohs scale now as a little bit of a supplement. This, the samples of matter used by Mohs are all different minerals. Minerals are pure substances found in nature. Rocks are made up of one or more minerals. As the hardest known naturally occurring substance when the scale was designed, diamonds are at the top of the scale. The hardness of a mineral is measured against the scale by finding the hardest mineral that the given material can scratch and or the softest material that can scratch the given material. For example, if some material is scratched by apatite but not by fluorite, its hardness on the Mohs scale would fall between 4 and 5. First person to, um, to volunteer can give a, uh, the Mohs scale is purely ordin uh, ordinal scale, for example, corundum 9 is twice as hard as topaz, but diamond is four times as hard as corundum. Okay, let's take a moment and talk about some extra credit. First, uh, first person to uh, volunteer can do a quick uh, presentation on the Mohs scale. Second person to uh, volunteer can do a special presentation on corundum. On corundum, I have to fix the I have to fix the timing, so I'm going to stop this and reset the timings. Be right back. PBS, a common mineral form of lead sulfide, in the sample shown below. The galena crystals are formed in a bed of quartz, that's important. The sample is about 4 by 4 centimeters and is from Neudorf, Germany. Very beautiful, you can see the luster. Now we're going to look at zircon. You see that uh, all the angles there are 90 degrees, that A equals B, but B does not equal C, or A or B doesn't equal C. Zircon is a zirconium silicate that contains trace amounts of radioactive minerals, hafnium, uranium, and thorium. Over time, these radioactive components break down the lattice of the crystal, eventually over tens of thousands of years, destroying the crystal, leaving it with an amorphous structure and a dark, pithy appearance. There is a crystal lattice uh, representation of Zircon. You may have heard of zirconium from fake diamonds, but it's actually a mineral. The fake diamonds is still a mineral. Zircons are, that are young and unaffected by radioactivity are termed high zircons. These stones are transparent golden yellow greenish and greenish brown in color with incredibly high dispersion. High zircons can be heated to temperatures over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit and become colorless or blue. You'll <coughs> maybe remember from any kind of study of geology that the blue diamond is the most famous of all the diamonds. The Hope Diamond is a blue diamond. It's on display in uh, Washington DC at the Smithsonian Institute. Here's a representation of the zircon uh, crystal and you see that of uh, the various elements there. That's why the name zircon has the connotation of synthetic or imitation. It was used to imitate a diamond, but the stone is indeed naturally occurring. It should not be confused with the synthetic cubic zirconium, which is in no way related to zircon. Sorry, I had to reset the timing. These highly dispersive colorless stones have long been used as diamond substitutes. Notice it says synthetic cubic zirconium. I'll give another extra credit. Someone do some research on 
cubic zirconium and just write it in your own handwriting and discuss it with me at lunch. Topaz is a silicate mineral that is valued as a gemstone. It is believed that the topaz of modern mineralogists was unknown to the ancients and that the stone called Tobasos was the mineral uh, chrysolite or pyridot. Pardon my pronunciation. And you can see the geometry. Here are some examples from uh, genuine topaz aqua blue to topaz baby pink, uh, topaz turquoise blue down below. Uh, very, very beautiful gemstones. Topaz is an aluminum silicate containing fluorine and has a chemical formula Al2F, OH2 SiO4. It is formed by fluorine bearing vapors given off during the last stages of crystallization of igneous rock. It, it typically occurs in cavities in rhyolts and granite or pegmatite dikes and is high temperature veins. Often associated with Cassiterite, topaz may be useful to indicate the presence of tin ore. Gypsum. Here we have gypsum and beta and gamma are 90 degrees and that does not equal alpha. So it's an odd kind of, uh, it's an odd kind of crystal. The, none of the sides are equal as well. Gypsum crystals in the cave of crystals in Mexico. Note the person down in the lower right hand corner at the end of the arrow, those are enormous crystals, kind of cool actually. Uh, <clears throat> gypsum crystals gy gypsum crystals in the cave of crystals in Mexico. Note the person for scale, already read that. Gypsum is a soft sulfate mineral composed of calcium sulfate dihydrate with the chemical formula CaSO4.2H2O. It can be used as a fertilizer, is the main constituent in many forms of plaster, and is widely mined. A massive, fine-grained, white or lightly tinted variety of gypsum called alabaster has been used for sculpture by many sculptors, including ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, ancient Rome, Byzantine Empire and the Nottingham Alabasters of medieval England. Many of you have uh, maybe used uh, <coughs> gypsum crystals in uh, sculpting in elementary school. It is the definition of a hard hardness of two on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. It forms as a evaporite mineral and as a hydration product of anhydrite. The word, that's very important actually, it sounds really boring but it's really cool. The word gypsum is derived from the Greek word gypsos, chalk or plaster, because the quarries of the Montmartre district of Paris have long furnished burnt gypsum, uh, calcined gypsum, used for various purposes. This dehydrated gypsum became known as plaster of Paris. Upon addition of water, after a few tens of minutes, plaster of Paris becomes regular mm -hmm. gypsum, the dehydrate version, again causing the material to harden or set in ways that are useful for casting and construction. Amazonite. You can see that none of the sides are equal and none of the angles equal 90. It is triclinic. Okay, try clinic. So it looks like a box that someone sat on. Crystal of a crystal of amazonite from the Take Five claim near Florissant, Colorado, and also from Pikes Peak, Colorado. Uh, aqua green amazonite, called Amazon Amazon stone, is a green variety of microcline feldspar. The name is taken from that of the Amazon River from which certain green stones were formerly obtained, but it is doubtful whether green feldspar occurred in the Amazon area. Amazonite is a mineral limited occurrence. 
Formerly it was obtained most exclusively from the area of Mayas in the Ilm Ilmen Mountains, 50 miles southwest of Chelyabinsk, Russia, where it occurred in granite rocks. More recently, high-quality crystals have been obtained from Pikes Peak, Colorado, where it is found associated with smoky quartz. Ortho class and albite is a coarse granite of pegmatite. Crystals of Amazonite can be found in Crystal Park, El Paso County, Colorado. Other localities in the United States which yield Amazonite include the Moorfield Mine in Amelia, Virginia. It is also found as pegmatite in Madagascar, that's off the coast of Southeast Africa, and in Brazil. Because of its bright green color when polished, Amazonite is sometimes cut and used as a gemstone, although it is easily fractured. For many years, the sources of Amazonite color was a mystery. Naturally, many people assume the color was due to copper, because copper compounds often have a blue-green color. More recent studies suggest that the blue-green color results from small quantities of lead and water in feldspar. Tourmaline, which is a very beautiful stone, has, let's see, alpha equals beta, which equals 90 degrees, and gamma is 120, A equals B, but not equals C. All right, you can see that the tourmaline gemstones from Mozambique are very pretty. This is the bicolor tourmaline. Looks kind of like a piece of uh, candy of some sort. Very, very beautiful. Here are some more uh, tourmaline, uh, watermelon tourmaline mineral on a quartz matrix. Very beautiful. Different stones. And uh, it's uh, all chemistry. Tourmaline is a crystal boron silicate mineral compounded with elements such as aluminum, iron, magnesium, sodium, lithium, or potassium. Tourmaline is classified as a semi-precious stone, and the gemstone comes in a wide variety of colors. The name comes from the Sinhalese word termali, or tourmali, which applied to different gemstones found in Sri Lanka. Brightly colored Sri Lankan gem tourmalines were brought to Europe in great quantities by the Dutch East India Company to satisfy a demand for curiosities and gems. At the time, it was not realized that shoral and tourmaline were the same. Mineral, it was only about 1703 that it was discovered that some colored gems weren't zircons. Tourmaline was sometimes called the Selenese Sri Lankan magnet because it could attract and then repel hot ashes due to its pyroelectric properties. Tourmalines were used by chemists in the 19th century to polarize light by shining rays onto a cut and polished surface of the gem. Tourmaline belongs to the trigonal crystal system and occurs as long slender to thick prismatic and culinar crystals that are usually triangular in cross-section. The style of termination at the ends of the crystals is asymmetrical called hemenomor hemenomorphism. Forgive me for my butchering of some of these words. Small slender prismatic crystals are common in fine-grained granite called ap aplite, often forming radial daisy-like patterns. Tourmaline is distinguished by its three-sided prisms. No other common mineral has three sides. Prisms faces often have heavy vertical striations that produce a rounded tri triangular effect. Tourmaline is rarely perfectly euhedral. An exception was the fine 
dravite tourmalines of Yinni at Hara in Western Australia. The deposit was discovered in the 1970s, but is now exhausted. The heminomorphic crystals are pezoelectric and are often pyroelectric pyroelectric as well. Extra credit for anybody who does some work on the pronunciation of the words in this section on tourmaline because they are really tough. Tourmaline has a variety of colors. Usually iron-rich tourmalines are black to bluish black to deep brown while magnesium-rich varieties are brown to yellow, and lithium-rich tourmalines are almost any color. Blue, green, red, yellow, pink, etc. Rarely it is colorless. Bicolored or multicolored crystals are common, reflecting variations of fluid chemistry during crystallization. Crystals may be green at one end and pink at the other or green on the outside and pink on the inside. This type is called watermelon tourmaline. Some forms of tourmaline are dichroic in that they change color when viewed from different directions. Two dark green rectangular tourmaline stones and one oval tourmaline stone. The pink color of tourmaline from many fields is the result of prolonged natural irradiation. During their growth, these tourmaline crystals incorporated manganese plus two and were initially very pale. Due to natural gamma ray exposure from radioactive decay of 40K in their granite environment, gradual formation of manganese plus three ions occurs which is responsible for the deepening of the pink to red color. The next one is going to be I think fascinating calcite. Uh, calcite is one of the most fascinating of all that we're studying here. All the sides are equal alpha and beta uh, and gamma Calcite is a carbonate mineral and most stable polymorph of calcium carbonate. The other polymorphs are the minerals aragonite and vaterite. Aragonite will change to calcite at 380 to 470 degrees Celsius, and vaterite is even less stable. Calcite crystals are trigonal rhombohedral, though actual calcite rhombohedra are rare as natural crystals. However, they show a remarkable variety of habits including acute to obtuse rhombohedra, tabular forms, prisms, or various scalenohedra. In geometry, scalenohedron is a polyhedron containing three or more pairs of mutually congruent scaling triangles as faces. Obsidian gives conchoidal fractures. Also, it was used extensively in weapons among ancient peoples, especially five, six, seven thousand years ago. The calcite, like most carbonates, will dissolve with most forms of acid. Calcite can either dissolve by groundwater or precipitated by groundwater. Sorry, I had to reset the timing. So I was saying about precipitated by groundwater, depending on several factors, including the water temperature, pH, and dissolved iron concentrations. Although calcite is fairly insoluble in cold water, acidity can cause uh, dissolution of calcite and release of carbon dioxide gas. Ambient carbon dioxide, due to its acidity, has a slight uh, solubilizing effect on calcite. Calcite exhibits several twinning types, adding to its variety of observed forms. It may occur as fibrous, granular, uh, 
lamellar, or compact. Cleavage is usually in three distinct parallel to the rhombohedron form. Its fracture is conchoidal, but difficult to obtain. Just a quick note here, where it says next slide, I think that referred to the obsidian uh, slide that was uh, before this. But uh, And also, some extra credit for you would be, I want to know the weapon and agricultural and all-around general use of, of obsidian and conchoidal uh, uh, fractures in this type of rock. To continue, calcite exhibits an unusual characteristic called retrograde solubility, in which it becomes less soluble in water as the temperature increases. When conditions are right for precipitation, calcite forms mineral coatings that cement the existing rock grains together or it can fill fractures. When conditions are right for dissolution, the removal of calcite from dramatically can dramatically increase the porosity and permeability of the rock, and if it continues for a long period of time, may result in the formation of caves. Many caves are uh, calcite in nature, so it wouldn't be unusual if that were to happen. On a Landscape scale, continued dissolution of calcium carbonate rich rocks can lead to the evaporate, the expansion and eventual collapse of cave systems, resulting in various forms of karst topography. Let's talk a little bit about karst topography. In essence, karst topography is any region where the terrain has been dissolved by the physical and chemical weathering of the bedrock. These areas are composed of carbonate rocks such as dolomite and limestone or have a high concentration of evaporites such as salt and gypsum. Because these minerals tend to be highly soluble in water, this high solubility causes the parent material to be highly susceptible to chemical weathering. This is a shot of a karst environment. Uh, look how kind of eerie it looks. It looks like something out of a science fiction movie. They're generally those mountains or hills are made of calcium carbonate or dolomite of some sort. Karst topography areas are found in almost every part of the world, but are most dynamic and most likely to occur in humid environments. Humid climates allow for a greater quantity of flowing water. There are some noticeable differences between humid temperate and humid tropical environments. The humid temperate climates are more likely to develop sinkholes, while humid tropical climates are dominated by hills. The greater concentration of calcite will most effectively determine the extent of karsts. And the picture above depicts typical karst topography in a humid tropical environment. High-grade optical calcite was used in World War II for gun sites, specifically in bomb sites and anti-aircraft weaponry. Also, experiments have been conducted to use calcite for a cloak of invisibility. Microbiologically, precipitated calcite has a wide range of applications, such as soil remediation, soil stabilization, and concrete repair. The largest documented single crystals of calcite originated from Iceland, measured 7 times 7 times 2 meters by 6 by 6 by 3 meters and weighed 
about 250 tons. Calcite is common is a common constituent in sedimentary rocks, limestone in particular, much of which is formed from the shells of dead marine organisms. Approximately 10% of sedimentary rock is limestone. Calcite is the primary mineral in metamorphic marble. It also occurs as a vein mineral in deposits from hot, from hot springs, and it occurs in caverns as stalactites and stalagmites. Lublinite is a fibrous, effervescent form of calcite. Calcite may also be found in volcanic or mantle-derived rocks, such as carbonate tites, kimberlites, or rarely periodotites. Calcite is often the primary constituent of the shells of marine organisms. Example, plankton, the hard parts of red algae, some sponges, brachiopods, echinoderms, some serpolids, most bryozoa, and parts of shells of some bivalves such as oysters and rudists. Calcite is found in spectacular forms in the Snowy River Cave of New Mexico, as mentioned above, where microorganisms are credited with natural formations. Trilobites, which, become ex which became extinct a quarter of a billion years ago, had unique compound eyes that used clear calcite crystals to form lenses, and they are very scary looking. I think there's a picture uh, towards the end of this. Calcite seas existed in early history when the primary inorganic precipitate of calcium carbonate in marine waters was low magnesium calcite, as opposed to the aragonite and high magnesium calcite precipitated today. Calcite seas alternated with aragonite seas over the Phanerozoic most being most prominent in the Ordovician or and Jurassic lineages evolved to use whichever morph of calcium carbonate was favorable in the ocean at the time they became mineralized and retained this mineralogy for the remainder of their evolutionary history. Next I'm going to show you a crystal this is a crystal. You see the blue is calcium, uh, the white is carbon, plus four, and the red is oxygen. So that's a shot of it, and you can see the arrows above that. Calcite containing niobium, giving it distinctive bluish color from Medford Quarry, Maryland. So you can see that's very marble-looking. Nailhead spar calcite. This is nailhead spar calcite. What's next? These are the very various minerals of calcite. Calcite fluoresces pink under long wave ultraviolet light. Very beautiful. You could wear it to a party as long as they have long wave ultraviolet radiation. Calcite fluoresces blue under short wave ultraviolet light. That's that's a, that's a, a trilobite eyes employ calcite as I mentioned before. I'm gonna reset this timers on these. Kind of scary looking. Reddish rhombo Hedral calcite crystals from China. Its red color is due to the presence of iron. Reddish rhombohedral. Stalactites and stalagmites are what are known as spellotherms, deposits of minerals that form into cave structures and line the insides of the caves. Stalactites are the formations that hang from the ceilings, while stalagmites look like they're coming up from the ground and stand up like traffic cones. 
Some may take thousands of years to form, while others can take can or sorry others can grow quite rapidly. The two formations are also sometimes referred to collectively as dripstone. Dripstone. Most of the material in here was very simple. It was taken from Wikipedia, which is a fine source. It's the beginning, but just very general. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a good day. Remember the extra credit that I mentioned. And uh, good luck.